All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, looks like we've got the waiting room slowing down here. So um, I know I'm popping up as Katie. I'm not Katie. Um, it's Maureen Radin. I am a senior manager at Aperion. I'll be doing our presentation today on HOA collections. Um, we scheduled an hour for this training. Um, we're probably going to give you the gift of time and it will um, not take an hour. Um, this is just going to be a brief overview of how the collections work in the HOA industry in general um, and some tips that you may want to take away from this meeting to think about as a board um, or in working with us at Aperion um, through the collections process. So hey, Maureen, this, will there be um, any sort of documentation or your deck shared afterwards? I'm just wondering how detailed of notes I need to take. Um, yeah, great question. So we're recording today's presentation. Um, so it will be available for you after today's session. Perfect. Thank you. And then if you, even if you'd like some of the slides, we can definitely get those over to you as well. So here's our agenda for today. Um, we're going to talk about the importance of an HOA collections policy, understanding the HOA collections process, HOA collection payments for um, collection methods for delinquent payments, um, just a, a little bit of a deeper dive into how the collections process works and some different options um, for collecting on past due assessments and um, wrapping up with why the collections process matters. Um, it's just a fun little comic, um, at least on our side that we think is funny. What, um, what people think we do is we're superheroes going out and finding the money from folks and what we actually do um, is we're um, getting lots of calls from people bargaining with all sorts of ways to try their to pay their past due assessments to us. Um, hopefully you can see on the screen it says I know you mean well Mrs. Fogarty but as I've told you before the last three months the HOA can't accept big goods as payment for your overdue fees. If only it was that simple. Um, so we'll start with the importance of an HOA collections policy. Um, so as board members or committee members, as you're probably aware, an HOA relies on assessments as a primary source of revenue. Um, depending on the way your association is set up, you may have some other ancillary sources such as um, cell tower fees or um, leases or other um, types of revenue streams in place. But in general, the assessments are where most of that revenue to pay the association's bills are coming from. Um, setting a standard policy for collections can save a great deal of time and trouble. Um, it's giving direction to your management company and also providing clarification for your owners about when assessments to become past due, what are the steps that are going to take place um, to get those um, funds collected. Um, and then by clearly defining the process, we can have a set of guidelines to refer to in case complications arise. Um, if you're an Aperion client, which I think everybody on the line is today, um, you will um, have a collections policy and, and process already in place. Uh, if you don't know what that looks like, if you're new to the board, or perhaps it's been a while since you've seen it, um, it should be uploaded to the owner portal, or you can feel free to reach out to your manager to share that information with you um, in, in case you're curious about what your specific policy looks like for your association. Um, understanding the collections process. So this is meant to be just a general timeline, um, depending on your um, association and the amount and the frequency of the assessments that you charge to your owners. This timeline may be longer. In some cases, may, it may even be a little more accelerated than this. Um, so we'd start on the 30 days past due. That would trigger an initial letter and then a reminder letter to the owner saying, hey, owner, you're past due. If you haven't received your payment, please send it in. Here's the options on how to make that payment. Um, if we still don't receive a response, we're going to follow up with a stronger demand, um, putting some time frames and some options in place for them to contact us to get that payment made um, before some stronger steps are taken. Um, some point after that, typically around the 60 to 90 day mark, there will be a letter and a demand stating that the collections attorney that the association has decided to engage what's going to become in, involved in the collections process um, and that file essentially will be turned over to those folks at that time if no payment um, is made. Um, the final demand um, it typically will come from your collections attorney. That's the letter from the attorney saying you know this is really your last opportunity to pay 
before we're going to take some steps like a personal lawsuit against you or initiating foreclosure um, against your property to get this um, these payments taken care of. Um, a lot of owners ask us the question about credit reporting, um, even when we send a courtesy reminder um, before the 30 days is up to, to let them know they have a balance, they think that that's somehow impacting their credit. Um, that's certainly not the case. That doesn't take place until much further down the line. Typically after that collections attorney or the um, collections agency is involved, um, that's when something like a credit report might be impacted by outstanding assessments. Um, so some methods for delinquent HOA um, assessments. So you, you can always, of course, refer to the governing documents like the CCNRs and the state laws. Um, I think you're all in Oregon, um, but the state law also sets out collection methods available to the HOA. Um, some governing documents are more specific than others as far as um, the timeline for collections, the amount that can be collected um, may be set. And then if not, there's also state law to refer to um, for, for that information as well. For our condo associations and single family home associations, we've given you those reference points in here for the sections in ORS to refer to that talk about collections for those types of communities. Um, let's talk some more about the process. Um, got another fun um, comic for you. Um, we don't have a Tony in our office, um, send a lot of letters, but um, you know, may maybe Tony would be an easier option <laughs> depending on the owners that we're dealing with. Um, the first step in this process um, would typically be the demand notice. Um, so sometimes you have owners who don't know that they missed the deadline. People have a lot going on. This is one of many, many bills that they're paying if they own home. Um, so we're sending out a notice that gives them all the details about how much they owe, whether there's been any late fees or interest charge on the account, and how many days late um, they are at that point. Is it one month of assessments? Is it, is it more? Um, and other important information, that would be things like um, if you want to send a check, here's the address where you want to send it. If you would like to pay it online, here's how you access the owner portal to make that payment. Um, just giving them all of that in case they were completely clueless that this was happening, giving them all the information they need to make that payment as quickly as possible. Um, an option that may be considered here, sorry, I've got somebody joining. Um, an often, option that may be considered is a payment plan. Um, some associate, you might want to check your governing documents to see if there's any specific provisions about that, but it might be something to consider if your association is um, seeing an uptick in delinquencies. Um, I've seen collections policies that stipulate a certain time frame on there that says so long as an owner offers to pay off their past due assessments in six months, um, the management company and or the HOA collection attorney have the authority to accept that plan. Um, that's just an example. Depending on, again, the frequency and the level of your assessments, that time frame may need to shift around to be faster or longer. There, there may be other provisions that you'd like to be considered. Um, I'd say this isn't something that comes up um, incredibly often. Um, it tends to be more of a discussion point when um, we're in an economic slump and folks are having a tough time paying and we get lots and lots of requests for owners to have a different way to make their payments but not fall into the process of collections. Um, but if you'd like to look at something like this, putting it into your collections plan so it's available for you when you need it, um, that's definitely a conversation our team would be glad to have with you. And of course, the point is after all, incremental payments are better than no payment. Um, if you have an owner who, who can at least start chipping away at that payment, um, that's probably better to at least try to work with them um, than to keep kicking this can down the line and, and making them further and further behind with lots more fees um, collecting on their account. Um, an option available to almost all associations is to revoke rights and privileges. Of course, depending on your association, it, the amenities that you have, this may carry more weight. Um, if you have a really attractive amenity like a pool or a fitness center or a clubhouse um, that is um, HOA access controlled, an option to you would to be revoke those privileges after you've given the owner a demand and a notice to pay. Um, and noted that suspending their rights is something that you plan to do if they continue not to pay. 
Um, a lot of association documents refer to taking away their right to vote in the HOA election. Um, it do doesn't tend to carry a whole lot of weight, um, at least not as much as um, locking them out of the pool, for example, some amenity that they'd really like to use. The point being, you know, we need assessments to be able to maintain this amenity, and if you'd like to use it, we're going to need you to go ahead and get caught up. Um, so this is something to consider. Um, if your association hasn't talked about that before, again, um, this is a great conversation for you to have with our team and to, and to make sure that that's built into your policies. Um, so this is an option that doesn't always come up very often. It depends on how your documents are structured and whether this is um, this type of agreement has been signed by a tenant involving the association, but there may be some provisions that allow you to seek payment from renters. Um, so kind of going around that owner um, to collect directly from their revenue stream that they have living at their property. Um, so again, this is a pretty specific situation. You would likely know if your association has this already in place. Um, if you're not sure, feel free to ask us and we'll, we'll check into that for you. Um, so the delinquency policy. So um, collecting <laughs> past due assessments can be a, a lot of work and a headache which is why a lot of um, associations turn to something like a collections agency or a collections attorney to take those steps for them. Um, there's very specific timelines and filings um, and, and fee structures that the association has to follow to meet with all of the different state and governing document requirements that it has to keep up with. Um, collections agency is certainly an option. Um, you know, if you're familiar with that structure, usually what happens is they will keep a part of any collected fees for themselves. Um, if you're looking at uh, an association where there's lots of folks who owe just a little bit of money, that may be something that you wanna pursue because they can just go bug these folks and get those little amounts taken care of and maybe you aren't concerned that you won't get the full amount. Um, if you're looking at an association with very, uh, maybe fewer associate, fewer owners that are past due, but larger balances um, may make more sense for you to get a collections attorney involved. Um, that's the route that um, all of our clients tend to take. Um, a collections attorney is going to bill the association um, just like any other attorney would for the fee, for the fees um, for their work. Um, but what we're doing is we're looking at that invoice and we're putting it on the owner's account as a fee that they're going to owe back to the association for all of that work. Um, the collections attorney is tracking those fees as well. So when they're going to the owner who wants to pay off their, um, their balance, it's going to include those fees. They're going to want to make a payment plan. The attorney is going to make sure that they're getting paid as well as the association getting paid as part of that payment plan. Um, there's, there's going to come a point in this collections process when our office will turn this over. We only take our collections so far, we'll take it to the demand notice where then the association attorney is involved and that contact information is shared with that owner. So they know, okay, at this point, this is these are the folks that you need to talk to to take these next steps. Um, the attorney's option will be to potentially file a lawsuit. Um, that would that would be a personal lawsuit against that owner. Um, when a lawsuit like that is filed, you can garnish wages. You can go after that owner's um, assets like a bank account, other properties they own. Um, that's something that your collections attorney would lay out to you once they've gathered some more information about um, that owner and what type of collections process would make sense. Again, as, if, assuming that they're not responding to any of those demands and these are your only options. Um, some associations choose to go to small claims court. Um, it would depend on the amount due and whether you have a board who's interested in going through that process um, or you'd like your management company um, to attend with the board and work through the small claims process instead of um, having these types of personal lawsuits filed. Um, I would suggest again that you work with your manager on that specific owner who's past due to decide what makes the most sense. Um, placing a lien or foreclosure. So um, in Oregon, the HOA assessments are automatically um, subject to lien. So that's not something that at our staff at some point is having to do and file a paper lien and go through that process. Um, that's already triggered just by the fact that that person lives in an association. Um, when the collections attorney becomes involved, however, if they're looking to 
um, go through the foreclosure process, they will need to file a formal lien just to kind of trigger that next step. Um, liens are kind of interesting. Um, people don't tend to pay a lot of attention to them at first necessarily, but they definitely definitely become an issue when that owner's looking to sell their home, to refi their mortgage, um, to get a line of credit somewhere, and that lien pops up showing that um, it's something that that's owned, and then that owner tends to call us pretty quickly to figure out how to clear that lien and to get those assessments paid um, so that they can clear that off their report. Um, it is certainly possible for an association to foreclose on the lien and to take the property. Um, after almost 20 years in this business, I can count on one hand how many times I've actually seen that happen. I would say it's pretty rare that that process goes through all the way. Typically, uh, and even just an intent to foreclose and the association showing that it's taking this very seriously is enough to trigger a conversation with that owner and to put a payment plan in place or to receive a very large partial payment to at least keep things going on the right track. The owner has really no interest in the association taking their home. I'm sure they wanna stay in the home. Um, so that's pretty rare, but it is an option that's available to the association. So assessments are serious and not paying them um, has, has quite a consequence. Um, Collections process matters. So it's a big uh, chunk of HOA management. A large part of our staff's processes here is involved with sending out statements, sending out reminders, taking calls from owners about how much do I owe, how do I pay, um, what happens if I don't pay, um, and then getting that information over to you all as board members to let you know this is where we're at with this owner, this is what they offered, this is what we recommend, what would you like to do. Um, and even though the HOA is a nonprofit, it still requires that revenue to continue its operations and keep property values up. Um, you know, as board members, you're, you're probably familiar with the fact that, you know, all of these services and amenities come at a cost. Um, and if lots of owners um, stop paying, you're going to have a problem continuing that level of service and keeping those amenities up to the level that's expected. Um, so setting a clear and standard collection policy just remains imperative. So everyone is on the same page as far as what those steps would look like uh, when and if an, an account becomes past due. Um, some best practices for collections involve being proactive. On our side, what we're doing to help you with that is to send that initial reminder notice before that owner becomes 30 days past due and might be subject to a late fee or an interest charge depending on your collections policy. Um, we're reaching out to them by email or mail, whichever way they've told us they would prefer to be communicated with, um, giving them some time to make that payment before any other steps happen. Um, multiple notices. That's also already in place here. People are given a, a lot of opportunities to pay and a lot of notices reminding them that they have a balance due really before any serious steps start, start taking place. Um, budgeting for delinquencies. If your budget doesn't include um, a bad debt provision or you're um, working off the assumption that everyone's going to pay and you have very little cash contingency, um, that may be a topic that your board needs to discuss in the case that such circumstances change and folks do stop paying or even just a small amount of collections might mean that you have some trouble paying your bills, um, it'd be a good idea to, to put a buffer in there for yourself and your budget. Um, and of course, standardizing the process, the same rules need to apply for everyone. Um, this can be kind of tough when you have owners who are writing you a narrative about why they can't pay and asking for some forgiveness or asking for some special exceptions. Um, it will remain important for your board to try to treat everyone the same and to apply that policy as evenly as possible. Um, certainly things happen and um, there, there's always room for discussion. Um, the, policy, the purpose of the policy and our notices are to walk folks through those steps so that they're aware every step of the way what, what potentially could happen next so that if we need to have a conversation about a payment plan or they'd like to ask the board for forgiving some late fees and interest, they have the opportunity to do so. Um, and again, if you're a client here, these processes are already in place and we're glad to share that with you if you're not already familiar with what that looks like. Um, another fun comic for you. Um, <laughs> Hopefully you're not the board member on the right where um, there's no reserves and they're 
being sued and they need help. Um, but yeah, collections can become, again, quite serious. And um, it's our job to try to keep everybody on track and as kind and as focused away as possible and to keep communicating with all of you as board members about um, what's going on with collections and um, any actions that we need from you to, to get that going. So that felt like it went pretty quickly, but again, we just tried to do a quick overview um, for you today, knowing that a lot of your documents and your, and your policies might look pretty different. Um, so you might have some specific questions you like to talk to your manager about. Um, but if you have a question and you like to unmute yourself or put some um, words in the chat, I would um, welcome that. I'll go ahead and open that up in case anybody's interested. Nobody so far? Um, like I mentioned earlier, oops, sorry, go ahead. Katie, it's Roger White. Uh, any, uh, are there any metrics that we could compare our particular complex to state regionally or countywide or statewide in Oregon to see where we compare on collections relative to other on a per resident basis? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, you know, having the portfolio of clients that we do, um, we could certainly give you some idea of whether it looks like on a, a number of owners past due basis or an amount past due, if it looks like you're tracking with others. Um, you'll notice in that quarterly financial variance report that our managers are pushing out to you that that's part of what we document in there is what a percentage of owners delinquent and if anybody is at collections, we lay out what's going on at that point. So that gives you a really good tracking mechanism to look from one quarter to the next, as far as we were at 2% past due last time, now we're at five, now we're at nine, you know, things are not trending in the right direction. We need to have a conversation. Um, and, and certainly if you were interested, reach out to your manager and ask them, you know, on, on our type of association, does it look like we're kind of in line with everybody else or, or not. Great, thanks. It's uh, it, honestly, it's a non-issue now, but uh, but just curious if, if it did become one if those metrics exist. So thank yeah. you. Great. Um, someone wrote in the chat. We have some members. We insist they are not part of our HOA. How do we check up on this? Yeah, well, um, the, I, I I love that we have owners who think that there's this idea that they can opt out of the association um, at some point, or I don't use the amenities. I don't want to pay for the pool. Um, all, you, all sorts of things um, are, are mentioned here. So as far as some members insisting they're not part of your HOA, um, you know, there's some things we can do as far as pulling up the plat map and seeing if those lots were platted um, as part of the original recording for the HOA, if they were included. Um, we can also pull up some property records on the county side, depending on, on where your property is located. Okay, it goes back to when the development happened. Um, so we can pull up the county records to see if um, the HOA is listed there um, on that owner's lot file. Um, those are kind of the first things that come to mind um, without kind of going into what a deeper dive might look like. But there's definitely some ways that your manager could look into that and show that owner. This is where it says you're subject to the association and the fees. Yeah. Um, can you show us some sample collection letters that Aperion sends to our members? Um, Robin, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't have those pulled up on my screen right now, but um, if you're interested, um, we have the list of participants today. Um, we can definitely follow up with you guys and let you know what a sample um, reminder letter and the demand letter looks like um, to this group so that you have that information. Okay. Any other questions on the phone or the chat before we sign off here today? Okay. Um, well, if you do, um, please feel free, free to reach out to us or again to your manager if you have association specific questions. Um, I'll be glad to follow up with that information that Robin shared uh, asked about. 
And again, we will have this presentation recorded in case you think this information might be helpful to your other um, board members or you'd just like to go back and review it at a later time. So thank you everybody for being here today and sharing your lunch with us. Um, appreciate you. it. Bye -bye. And um, we'll be back in touch when we have another training scheduled next time. Have a great day.